What's up, Hans family? This tutorial, as you can tell, is going to be all on the Anastasia Beverly Hills subculture palette. It is a new palette that came out. I'm sure you guys have heard of it, but I purchased it so that I could give you my views on it, and uh, let's get into it. So I don't usually purchase palettes too often because I'm a cheap bitch, so this one really inspired me. The colors were so fucking pretty. The second I saw it, I was like, nope, I definitely need that in my arsenal of makeup. So here it is in all its glory. <laughs> I'm going to prep my face first with this NYX Pore Filler and the NYX Hydra Touch Primer, if the pore filler would ever come out, come on. Anyways, I just put that all over my face to prep, and now I'm grabbing the IT Cosmetic CC Cream and buffing it in with a Kabuki brush. This is from Sigma. The CC Cream is all worn down because this is what I wore through Europe when I was there. I just love that it has 50 SPF, so kind of perfect for being out in the sun. So this product, I don't think I've ever used on my channel yet. It is the Glam Glow Glow Setter Spray. So I just spray that shit all over and then kind of push it into my makeup with a brush. Which you don't necessarily have to do, but I just feel like it makes my makeup all hydrated and refreshed or something. This is my NARS Chantilly Creamy Radiant Concealer. That is so many words all together. I use this all the time on my high points and to cover any acne spots. I'm grabbing that glow setter spray again just to spray between layers. It's almost like Fix Plus. I used to use Fix Plus all the time between layers, so this kind of does the same thing. Set your face just a little bit. This is the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. I'm doing it just a tiny bit so it's nice and soft. All right, subculture palette. Let's see what you have inside of you. I'm gonna use this palette as much as I possibly can. Show me what you got. So I'm taking the shade Mercury. And I dipped into it, and it's definitely a little chalky and powdery. And I was going to blend it under my, you know, cheekbone like normal, but it stuck onto my skin a little different than kind of some other ones. So I went with a little bit of a lighter touch and blended it out that way. They are really pigmented, but I was a little surprised at when I would just barely tap the product, how much would fall off. So I'm going in with a really soft touch, and you can see all of it is just kind of pouring out. It did still blend out nicely once I went in and just barely tapped the product and really used my brush to get in there. You do not need a lot when it comes to this palette. I'm even going for blush. This is the Roxy color. Just adding a tiny bit and blending it out. I even added a little bit of face powder of my color on top just so it was a little lighter. Okay, this is the Benefit Stay Don't Stray Eyelid Primer. One of my new favorite primers, just putting that all over. And since the palette does come with a brush, I was like, fuck it, I want to put the brush to the test too, so I only am going to use the brush for the entire eye look. This is Dawn, which is a great kind of light transition shade, so I'm taking the fluffy brush side and just blending that right in my crease. I knew I kind of wanted to do like a halo type eye. And with some layering, that seemed to blend out pretty nicely, I didn't have any issues with it. And then I grabbed New Wave, which is one of the colors that drew me to this palette. I fucking love mustards. It's like an orangey mustard. And instead of going super hard with the fluffy brush, I decided I wanted to pack the eyeshadows more. Which, when I started to pack the eyeshadows more, it helped immensely. Since it is kind of powdery and, you know, super pigmented, packing it down, god, so many P words in a row, <laughs> helped me to get the best color payoff as I was going. Blending just a little between the layers, I grabbed Edge, which is the lighter yellow in the palette, and just put that right towards the center, still using that packing brush and pushing the color into my eyelid as much as possible. Axis is the other color that really drew me in. This teal is so pretty. And I'm just going to take that and lightly put it in my crease, creating more of that kind of circular halo eye shape. And like I said before, if you're down to sit there and just kind of pack the eyeshadows more, use a very light touch, I think with these matte shades, even though they are kind of powdery, you can get a really nice blend if you just use that packing brush to lightly touch the skin and blend it out that way. Picking up fudge, I use this just to kind of help transition from the green into the yellow just lightly putting it on with that denser side of the brush. And it's gonna be all about the pressure of your brush. You can really manipulate the shades to get a nice soft gradient if you put the color down where you want it and then pat it out. These are Roxy All Star and Rowdy. I'm using Rowdy, which is the darker purple shade, just in the outer corner. 
adding Roxy towards the inner, and then kind of mixing between the darker purple and pink on the outer and inner corners just because the dark purple wasn't as bright as I wanted. Add a little bit of yellow towards the center, but man, because there was so much fallout, I did take that powder of my shade again and just use that to blend out some of the edges of the eye and kind of get where my little eye bags are because those grab fallout like no fucking other. Now that the eye is all done, oh my gosh, this product I was so, so freaking excited to use. It's the MAC Roller Wheel Eyeliner. Like, look at that. Isn't that such an interesting concept? And it actually creates pretty good straight lines. I was very surprised. So since I did matte eyeshadows throughout the entire look, I wanted there to be a graphic liner element. You obviously know I'm all about that liner too. And if you use this liner in very short strokes, you can manage the thickness. It does go on very thin. So I did go back and forth very slowly to get a little bit thicker. It's just kind of nice because you don't have to move your hand too much to, into weird different angles to get the eyeliner to do exactly what you want. You just hold it like that and it just rolls on. And a tip is to just keep your eyelids relaxed and look down at the mirror so that you can see exactly what you're doing and so that they can kind of sort of match pretty well. When it came to bottom lashes, I was like, eh, there needs to be something else on the bottom to counteract the top and these little black rhinestones are perfect. I just added those down, so those can kind of act like my bottom lashes instead of actual bottom lashes. And like I said earlier, continuing with the theme of trying to use the palette as much as possible for this look, I wet a little bit of an angled brush and used the access shade since I have my little green wig on. You can see the, the, the roots of it real bad to have some fluffy little eyebrows and I wet the brush just so that the color would be a little more like a liner. Uh, and then I put eyeshadow on my cupid's bow, but I don't like how it looks, so ignore that. Ashton Liquid Lipstick from Anastasia went on my lips, which I guess really didn't matter in the end anyways, because I just covered it with eyeshadow. Because I love using eyeshadows on lipsticks, because it can create some really cool dimensions. And I did use a matte shade, which did in turn, you know, end up having my lips kind of dry and powdery looking, but I love the mustard color so much that I was like, fuck it, this is awesome. Popped on some velour lashes. These are like some of the softest, littlest lashes I think I've like ever worn on my channel because I love them thick ones. And for the waterline, I wanted the eyeshadow to be able to hold on to something, so I just popped on a little bit of white liner in there and put the yellow edge color right on top. Set that bad boy and you are done. All right, here is the finished look with the Anastasia subculture palette this palette retails for i believe 42 dollars so um this is after one use there is some definite changes in the pans especially in this shade i used a larger brush on it and it was just completely falling out of the palette so that's a little mildly disappointing just because i wasn't going too ham into dipping into the products so I had a few cons, like when I was trying to use it on my face, it was a little hard to blend out, but when I just used a packing brush and I wanted to just use the brush that came with the palette, when I just used the packing brush and I packed on the shadows and I didn't really do a whole lot of blending with a big fluffy brush, it actually worked pretty well with me. I'm very happy with the payoff, I'm pretty happy on the eyeshadow wise. If you are looking to get this palette or you already have it, I would suggest trying that out first instead of trying to just like go fucking crazy with blending it with a blending brush, really trying to just pack the shades on top of each other to then get that blend. All in all, um, I'm pretty happy with this purchase, just because I like the colors so much. I, I don't know, I just think they're so pretty and there's so many different ideas, you know, you can do with it. I was even kind of like overly inspired when I first opened it, like I had no idea what I wanted to do, but um, yeah, so I think it is a good investment. When you first swatch all the colors, you're like, holy shit, the pigment. Like, they are pigmented as all fucking Christ, you guys. They are so, I was so, so blown away when I was swatching them on my fingers. And then, you know, it is just a little different applying it to your face. So all in all, because the eyeshadows are pretty powdery, there is going to be some fallout. But for me, the colors are so beautiful that it's fucking worth it. That's okay. I really hope you guys like this tutorial and a little bit of a review. And don't worry, you guys, beauty bitches, I got you. But 
it's time for some special effects. My next video is going to be a really cool special effects, and I can't wait to show you, and I'll see you soon. Love the fuck out of you. Bye.